Let me, let me just ask you a simple question. On Donald Trump's watch, and we know he was heavily supported by the NRA, and that's one of the reasons he got elected. On his watch, we've had three of the top ten worst mass shootings in American history. Mm. And so far, Donald Trump has done absolutely nothing to stop them happening again. What is you, as a, as a leading advocate for the NRA, what is your idea for how we stop these mass shootings happening? I, I don't know that it's possible to uh, stop all violent crime. I, I mean, that, that, that seems to me to be a little bit pie in the sky. Uh, in Parkland, Florida, the failures of every level of government are documented. The, the, the FBI, the local sheriff's department, social services, uh, C Nicholas Cruz, the, the, the Brown County sheriffs could have arrested him. I taught Florida uh, firearms law when I lived there. The sheriff's department in Broward County could have arrested Nicholas Cruz on multiple different occasions, any one of which would have disqualified him from being able to purchase a weapon. And I find it ironic that instead of focusing on the, the failures of the FBI, the sheriff's department, government, the social services, it, the NRA is vilified and demonized for something they had nothing to do with. Well, why is bump fire stock still legally available in America when its only purpose, it seems to me, is to convert semi-automatic weapons, which are still legal in America, into effectively automatic weapons. Why, why would you not want, as a responsible gun owner, to stop other people doing what that man did in Vegas? Well, I can, I can argue both sides. I can argue from two different positions on, on why. Number one, the, the people have a valid you know, argument to say that uh, when you start with banning accessories, where does that road lead uh, down the road? For me, as a firearms instructor for over a decade, my personal and professional opinion is that bump stocks are a gimmick. No serious shooter that I know uses them. They're, they're a kind of a, you know, just something to mess around with. But the more important thing that nobody wants to talk about is banning bump stocks is actually a, a false sense of having accomplished something. And here's why. You can actually do exactly what a bump stock does with a piece of string and a key ring. Are we going to ban string and key rings next? Give me you one know, thing you would do to stop mass shootings if it doesn't involve taking well, again, guns away. Well, I, I again, I think it's incredibly naive to, to think that you're ever going to be able to stop... Just uh, give me one thing, Mr. Roberts. Give me, give me one idea. Give me one idea to stop well, the mental, tide the, of mass there, shootings. It is, no secret, it is no secret that the mental health system in this country is horribly broken. Mm. Again, you know, Nicholas Cruz, Adam Lanza... Yeah, um, we, we have mentally ill uh, people here, though. It, OK. But they can't get and access to guns, so why wouldn't you stop that? Pierce, we have to... If we're going to have a rational discussion about this, these false comparisons of the UK and Australia to the US have to stop. It's an absurd premise. The, 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 the similarities are far smaller than the, the, you know... It's like saying apple and pineapple. Yes, they both have the word apple. Yes, they're both fruits. But that's where the similarities end. Would the you, UK doesn't have the population restrict... size of the United States. Yeah, if somebody's got a um, mental illness, would you restrict their access to firearms? If they, if they have had due process and they have been adjudicated that, uh, to such that you know, extent by a judge, then absolutely I would. Australia, which you cited just then, they had a mass shooting in the mid-90s. Their response was to launch a massive buyback program on guns, which was very successful. Uh, 600,000 guns were handed in. They've not had a mass shooting since. They also put new restrictions that on... That is absolutely not true. There well, have actually is, been it, it is four true. mass shootings in all Australia no, since Port no, Arthur. there has not been... Yes, there have been. OK. Yes, there have been. All right. There has not been a mass shooting in Australia. I can prove it, Piers. OK. Let Piers, me ask... I can prove it. How no, are not... we going to have a conversation if you keep saying things that because I know aren't true? It's completely untrue. There has not been a it's mass shooting true, and in Australia can look it up. since the mid 90s. That's the whole point. You, you like facts. Um, just to clarify, then. Yes. NRA members were banned from taking guns into the room where the president was. Is that correct? But as a, a Secret Service standard policy. Where does it say in the US Constitution, particularly in relation to the Second Amendment, that the Secret Service is allowed to ban guns in the presence of the president? 
It doesn't, but that's a whole completely different argument that we'd have to do in another but I segment. Thought, I thought the wording of the, of the Second Amendment in the US Constitution was so sacrosanct, your rights could never be infringed. It seems to me, Mr Roberts, that your rights mm -hmm. were grotesquely infringed at your own conference. NRA members and I would, and were not I would, allowed to take their guns and therefore you were left vulnerable and defenceless. You could have been, you could have been shot, I was, Mr Roberts. I was in the safest room in the world the entire weekend and I've never felt prouder. I believe every American has a birthright to keep and bear arms and to exercise that right oh, in I know. defense of themselves I know, I know and what their loved ones. I know what you believe. I just can't understand. Well, but you're focusing on NRA members. But you, weren't, but you weren't allowed to carry them at your own conference in the room of the Peers, president. How you many, were banned. This is the third time you I were banned. Say, but Dan, that's not Dan, true. Dan, I know what you believe. Why didn't you fight for your belief and your right to bear arms at your own conference? Why should I take up a fight that I'm not particularly concerned about at this moment? You're not concerned about I was somebody. Legally armed. You're not on concerned the floor about the, the Secret Service completely infringing on your right to bear arms at your own conference. Piers, damn. I have a, an option, just like everybody else. You could choose to voluntarily disarm if you wanted to hear the president or the vice president speak. Wow. Or you could choose not to. Freedom is a great thing. Wow. I'm so disappointed in oh, you. Oh, Piers, I, I know. I, and I can't tell you how little I care about your disappointment. I know. But the, but the great thing, Dan, is now that you've allowed your rights to be infringed, you've opened up such a massive can of worms. I because now, allowed every time, to be said, As every I said, time I now somebody says, time. we want to ban guns, how can you, from the NRA, in all good consciousness, stand up and say you're not allowed to ban guns from there or there or there when you allowed your own guns to be banned from your own conference. And I will say for the fourth time, my rights weren't infringed at all. I was on the floor. You didn't go in the room Trump, because you were legally banned. armed the entire you, time. Your rights were infringed because you weren't <laughs> allowed in the room with your gun, Dan. I had no interest in going in that room. You had no interest in going to the room where the President of the United States was about to no. endorse the NRA. Of course you did. No, didn't. I was busy. I was busy. Yeah, you were busy. Other more, more you were busy business. with your gun, <laughs> only you weren't allowed in that room because you were banned.